Oh, shalom. Shalom. Ah, Stefare. Greetings, greetings. Go tell it on the mountain. It's the eighth day. The fulfillment of the Matadis Ba'al and the Hanukkah for 2014. Shalom Rastafari. Wow. The birth of our Savior. The birth of Yeshua. Many call this and are observing this as the eve of Christmas. Christmas Eve. <clears throat> And now this is a very controversial issue among some, you know, concerning when the Savior, when Yeshua HaMoshiach was born. And we've addressed that particular issue. This is the vid for Wednesday, December 24th and the fulfillment of the Hanukkah. Ainai Rastafari, Rastafari Hanukkah. And... The link with the Torah portion is just so interesting, brothers and sisters. Those of I and I co-disciples, hopefully soon to be more co-laborers, but we need to grow, you grow in the grace of Yeshua HaMoshiach and the knowledge, you know, and the knowledge of him. So this is the birth of I and I Savior. This, this, the reason for this season. And what's interesting is that, um, Though the promised birth, right, the promised birth of Yeshua HaMoshiach. Let me bring this uh, pick right up here. This is one of my um, favorite. I think it's a Tim Ash, Ashkar. Tim Ashkar. I think that's the artist of this particular, um, this particular Martin Madonna. Look at this as almost like a Beta Israel Renaissance, you know, as a Black Israel Renaissance. Um, the picture right there, right? But the promised birth of Yeshua, <clears throat> no doubt, may have occurred during the holy day of the holy time, the Hebrew um, holy days of Sukkot or tabernacles with the incarnation. Interesting. And this is this is from study of the scripture, but this provides a new, a fresh perspective to the scripture and the half of the story that wasn't told that his incarnation, the incarnation of Yeshua, the incarnation of Jesus Christ may have occurred during the time of Hanukkah with his birth, with the birth during the season of Sukkot, the season of uh, tabernacles, right? Or that's interesting. That's interesting right there, the, the gathering. Right, that in gathering, that gathering, which is actually the end of the Hebrew holiday season. So we have his um his birth at the end of the Hebrew holy day season and the crucifixion at Pesach or Passover time. I think that's very interesting. Oh now many people of uh of good faith and no doubt a lot of tradition. They observe the traditional date of December 25th. And um, we're not going to get into that. So many people have gotten into that. And I just say, don't be a Pharisee about that. You know what I mean? But in grace and in truth, right? Because many of us have uh, held on to a lot of traditions and it's only through his grace and truth and study and learning that we were able to grow out of it and come out of whatever the confusion or the half truths, so forth and so on. But what is true is that Josh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever of I and I should believe, believe, admit, amen in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Amen. Oh, 
must be the children of the Israelites. Yes, I. Now, regardless of your particular conviction or I won't say opinion, you know, but it's your opinion. You know, we have different convictions about when exactly was the birth of Yeshua or the date of the Messiah's birth. However, the most important point is that <clears throat> he was born to bring salvation through his through his sacrificial death as the lamb of the father as the lamb of God the lamb of ha elohim that taketh away the sin right of the world but keely for israel he first came to his own his own refuse him but those of us who receive him we also celebrate as his majesty teaches i and i the true meaning of the birth of Yeshua and, the, and this particular season and listen to and check out the interview of his majesty on that particular um, subject matter as well but Hebrews uh, 10 5 and 7 shows us that he was you know he was born to die I know that's a that's a heavy issue for once but even um, the wisdom book says that better is uh, the day of a man's death than the day of his birth but that is even pointing to Yeshua he says, you read the scriptures thinking you have eternal life, and these are they which testify of I. Indeed, the story of his birth is only significant in relation to his sacrificial death as the Seha Elohim, as the Lamb of God. Mark chapter 8, verses 27 to 33. Now, the manger scene... The scene that we have of Yeshua HaMoshiach in the manger, that scene, it leads actually directly to the cross tree, to the Mescal, to the true cross. That's the old gospel story itself. That's the, that's the foundation. That's the groundation. That's the true gospel story, the true good news that Ha Elohim, the true power, God, if you please, Cha. So love the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes, whosoever amains, admits the truth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. John 3, 16. This matter, this is the matter which is of first importance, namely that Yeshua, the Yeses, Ketachin Adunenu was born to die for I and I sins, for I and I missing of the mark, to make I and I right, to reconcile us with Abba Father, with I and I God and Father, with Ha Elohim Baruch, Baruch Baruch Hu, blessed be He, and 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 was raised from the dead to do what? To vindicate, to vindicate the righteousness. Of Ha Elohim, the righteousness of God in Christ. First Corinthians fifteen three to five. Salazi, so therefore, his birth, or rather, his incarnation, Shigawe, Sagawe, the Mishtira Sagawe, was the first step. Right, was the first step toward his sacrifice for I and I deliverance, for I and I victory. Hebrew 2, verses 9 to 18. Therefore, it's interesting, Hanukkah, the end of Hanukkah in this particular season, the eighth day, about eight days to the new year, the eve of uh, the eve of the Western Gentile uh, Christmas or the the other tradition, the December 25th. Interesting. The first step. This was the first step. This was the true one love. Ah. Uh -huh. Now, while Christmas, or what's called Christmas, 
is customarily the time that many people observe the birth of the Savior, the birth of Jesus, if you please. It is surely appropriate to celebrate Yeshua's glory, his glory, finite to celebrate his glory. Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah have prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. So it's surely to it's surely appropriate to to celebrate, to honor, to glory in Yeshua's glory as I and I risen king, the king of kings and the Lord, the master, the Adonai every day. Every day of I and I lives. Therefore, brothers and sisters, I and I, in spirit and in truth, wish each and every one of you a wonderful Christmas season in the spirit of the truth of I and I, Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And may I and I take the time, take the time to take a breath, to breathe and take the time to reflect upon the profound gift of the one, the true one, who was so great that he emptied himself of all his regal, all of his kingly, his noble, his true glory and power to be clothed in human flesh, to take on, take on our humanity as our black Lord and Savior in order to die as our sin offering, as the Father's offering for I and I, for I and I shortcoming. And with that word, we pray and we hope for the salvation of Israel and all of those who will be called out and who are being called out from amongst the nations. So brothers and sisters, a little message here on um, the birth of I and I, Savior, and this particular season and a word and a message for the reason for this season. So Shalom Rastafari. This is uh, Ras Iodonis Tafari of the Lion of the Tribe of Jude Society saying a Melcom fulfillment to the Hanukkah and for those who are observing at this particular juncture the birth of our black Lord and Savior don't act like you did not know Shalom Rastafari <laughs>